Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're over at the Kearney Trekker Model 3H horizontal milling machine. And for you guys that follow along with the channel regularly, you know I've had this machine in the shop now for about a year. Uh, not quite a year, but close to it. And uh, shortly after I got this machine, I found uh, the, a universal head, vertical head. Actually, this is a universal head. It's, it will swivel and go in all kinds of different directions besides vertical. Uh, but basically, this mounts to the machine and allows you to have a vertical uh, cutter or, like I said, any possible combination of angles and two different axes that you want to mill in. Very versatile, very handy uh, item. This was not original to this mill, but it is the size that fits this mill. And I found this up in Milwaukee from a gentleman that actually used to work for uh, Kearney and Trekker. Um, and we worked out a deal for it. When I was up there in the area, I picked it up, brought it home. Uh, and it came with the elusive drive gear that drives this. These gears are often missing, at least so we thought. Um, when I got it home and we tried to hook it up, we realized that this was not the proper gear. So from there, uh, I went on a search for the right gear, couldn't find one anywhere. They are very difficult to find and decided I was going to make my own. I actually have got a lead attachment for this machine now and I was almost ready to start trying to cut spiral gears when lo and behold, look what showed up in the shop, uh, the right gear here. Let me zoom you in here, show you these gears and tell you the story about how this one came, came uh, around. So again, when I got the machine, it came with this drive gear here. Uh, Mr. Ron Grundy, who was a former employee of Kearney Trekker, he had some parts laying around his shop and uh, he found this gear. And it was the correct diameter, it was the correct number of teeth, it was the correct gear pitch. And uh, he honestly really did think that it went with this machine. When I got it home and put it on though, I found out that this gear was too thick, it stood out too far, wouldn't allow me to clamp the head back up to the machine like it needed to. We started doing some research, he actually found the blueprints for the correct gear, and it is virtually identical to this gear. It's the same, again, gear pitch, same diameter, same number of teeth. Uh, the only difference is, is, if you look, this one here is kind of recessed in, whereas the one that I got Originally, you see it, it mounted flush on the outside. In fact, it's, it's about a, I don't know, a 32nd inch proud there sticking out. Whereas all this is recessed back in there. That allowed that gear to go back a little bit farther. There was one other small difference, or maybe large difference, and that's on the front side of the gear. Uh, the one I needed had this little plate on there. And uh, this uh, basically keeps, when you get the gears meshed up in there, it keeps uh, that gear from kind of walking. It kind of catches the back of the, of the mating gear and keeps it in line. So this is the gear that I needed, not this one. This one is a K&T gear and it fits some universal head that's out there, some vertical head that's out there. I have no idea what model or whatever, uh, but if anybody has a need for that one, it is available. This is a 35 tooth. I can't remember the diameter. If, if you think you could use it, let me know and uh, we'll see if we can work out a deal. But good news is this is, according to the blueprints and the drawings that I have, this is a perfect one. Now, where did it come from? I got an email uh, a couple of weeks ago from a viewer friend up in uh, Oregon. Yeah, it was Oregon area. Uh, John Germain, or Germain, I'm not exactly sure how he pronounces that, but uh, he's a viewer of mine and he went to a machinery dealer up there and saw some uh, gears for look like K&T gears. And he sent me an email, sent me some pictures and lo and behold, this was a machinery dealer that was uh, getting ready to go out of business. And lo and behold, they had sitting on a shelf the gear that I needed. So he talked to the company up there and uh, we worked out a deal. And let's just say that my plan was is I was gonna make one of these gears. I was getting, actually getting ready, kind of getting started to do that project. I'd already bought a piece of metal that I was gonna make it out of and a couple other pieces. For the price that I picked this gear up, 
I don't think I could have bought all the tools and tooling and materials that I needed to actually build it. So it was a really good deal for me. I know a lot of folks were really wanting to see me make this uh, using my lead attachment. I am still planning on using the lead attachment to make some spiral gears. I want to learn how to do that and play around. Um, but the big advantage to finding this original K&T drive gear is, is that these gears were originally hardened. So they were basically made out of a good, uh, good quality steel. Uh, they roughed out the, the teeth. They then hardened them. They then went in and ground this whole thing. The actual final teeth were actually ground in rather than cut in on a milling machine. I was, would not, if I had made a gear for this, it would not have been a hardened uh, tooth gear. Now, it would have worked just fine and no more than I'm gonna use this uh, vertical head. I would have never wore it out. But finding this one, you know, I've got a factory item now. It's got hardened teeth on there. This one is exactly what it's supposed to be, and I'm really excited to have it. And a big thank you to John uh, for taking the time to go over there and uh, dig around and dig up the gear that I needed. I was, it was literally looking for a needle in a haystack, and uh, he, he was able to, to find it. I gave him some dimensions and some things to work off of, and um, I could not be happier to have found this gear. Let's uh, get it on the machine and uh, try it out. So this gear just kind of fits right up onto the spindle. You got the dogs in there to drive it. There's four holes for um, cap screws to go in there uh, to tighten it down. But originally when this gear came from the factory, it had this piece right here. Now this is just a little 50 taper spindle that fits up in there. It just kind of helps line things up. Uh, you know, it, it is not really st strongly attached. It just kind of fits down in there, almost loose. Um, but it still kind of helps line things up. I'm going to use it. Uh, this was one that Ron Grundy, my friend who used to work for K&T, had in his inventory. And when I got the other gear, he sent this along. So I'm going to go over. I'm just going to press that in real quick, and it'll be nice to have that little addition on there. Not required, but nice to have. Well, I just went to get some cap screws for this thing. I've got a half inch cap screw that doesn't fit. I've got five eighths inch cap screws, too big. Uh, turns out this is a nine sixteenths inch thread, uh, nine sixteenths. I don't remember what pitch it is, but anyway, I'm gonna have to order some cap screws for it. But for today, since I do have the uh, the spindle on the back, we can use that to kind of snug it in there. It's kind of captured in here, so it really can't escape. Uh, but I really do need to get the, the cap screws to bolt it in there. I think for a quick test run today, it'll be fine. But I'll have to order some of those uh, from McMaster Car. I'll have some here first of the week. All right. That is uh, mounted on there. Glad I got that uh, centerpiece there. Just using the draw bar, and uh, that'll keep everything lined up perfectly on it. All right, let's uh, get the head mounted on here. I've got my uh, gantry crane mounted over this thing to kind of deal with this. Uh, what would be nice is to find an original parking attachment for this machine. Parking attachment is kind of a crane that mounts to the side of the milling machine, mounts to the milling machine itself, and uh, really just allows you to swing this uh, head around when you need it. So uh, I'm on the lookout for a parking attachment, like a lot of people are. Uh, maybe one day I can find me one. tighten up one of these uh, clamps on my overarms so that they won't push in. I'm going to see if I can get that to go up on there a little bit better than what it is right now. There we go. That ought to do it for right now. They're not all the way, those overarms aren't all the way in there, but 
they're in there enough that I think we can uh, get it in there. And once I get it mounted on there, I can push them the rest of the way forward. All right, there's some clamps on the side here. You get those out of the way. And we should be able to pull the head back. I'm going to tighten that head up on there just so that they don't come off, so I don't have anything holding it up. I took the gantry off. I would hate to flop this thing over on the floor. So now let me loosen this one back up. And we should be able to move that right back on there. Hmm. All right, guys, we got it on, and uh, I'm not going to take it back off to show you how I did it. Uh, but here's basically what I had to do. So we had to move the arms all the way back and kind of pull this up over, get it up on here, and drop it down on that gear. Once we kind of got it dropped down on that gear, it was a matter of moving the overarm supports into the receivers up here in the top uh, to get everything aligned up and mounted like it should be. And it is now mounted like it should be. Uh, it was a little bit aggravating. Uh, again, if I had a parking attachment on here with the crane that's built into the machine, I think it'd be a lot easier to mo maneuver this thing around than it is with the gantry crane, particularly the way I'm having this gantry crane is kind of in here wopsided. I could barely get it over here and I can't get it exactly over. So my chain was kind of pulling a little bit to the forward just made things aggravating uh, but we did get it on here and now that I know the secret next time it'll be a lot easier so now that it is on I do want to just tighten up these clamps there's uh, two clamps one on each side of this thing and uh, basically what these clamps do is when you loosen them up let me just kind of show you here there's a notch in there and you can slide them out over the way and that'll allow you to slide it back over the dovetail once you get it in place, you slide these in, tighten them up. There's some notches in here that kind of align and that will tighten everything up to the dovetail here. So not only is it sitting, being supported by the overarm supports, but it's also literally clamped to the machine itself uh, right here on either side. So let me get this one tightened up and I'll go to the other side and get it tightened up on that side as well and we'll be ready to try this thing out. All right, let me tighten up the other side. And that is clamped. I'm gonna make sure these overarms are clamped in place as well. This just sandwiches this together on those overarm supports so it's good, nice and tight. And I think we're ready to try it out. All right, that's better. Now the beauty of this particular head is, is that it swivels around. I can swivel this 360 degrees in that direction and I can also swivel this one around 360 degrees which means I can get just about any angle that one can imagine if I want to do some really weird stuff. So uh, right now uh, I'm just going to set that. We're just going to get it somewhere close. I'm not going to try to get it set. Really what you would want to do uh, to set this thing is to indicate off of it to get whatever angle you want. What I really need is a socket. Let me see if I got a socket that'll fit up on those. Oh yeah, that fits just perfect. Almost like it was made for it.
And again, you can uh, swivel this bottom one around too. But I, would, I just wanted to get that where you could see that turning. And let's power up our phase converter. Machine is on. And there we go. Just like it ought to work. So one other thing I want to show you on this head that's kind of neat is that there's this uh, bolt right here that locks uh, the head to the back plate. Now that everything is installed, I'm going to move it over to the side here. Let's see, is there one of these on the other side as well? Nope, there's not. And I'm going to loosen up the top up here with the overarms. And we should be able to move the whole head out and position it wherever we want it. There we go. So there is a uh, spline shaft right here that allows this uh, whole head to move forward. Uh, I'm sure there's probably a limit in there of how far out it can go. It's, okay, it's, it's off the spline right there. So somewhere along in there is about as far out as it'll go. But that's a really nice feature there to position that wherever you want to for your work that you're doing. You don't have to have it all the way back on there. So this particular head, unlike a lot of the other vertical heads and stuff that K&T offered, this one is adjustable like that, which really is a nice feature. We'll pull it back in. Of course, when you're moving the head on and off the machine, you want to lock it in place uh, by just putting this piece back on over here. There we go. And we'll go ahead and lock it back down. Okay. Well guys, uh, there you go. You kind of get an idea of how this uh, head works. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it back off. I wanna get those bolts up in that, that uh, gear before I really run this thing too much and uh, play around with it some and just kind of um, see if we can do some milling with it. I need to, uh, I know that this, this tool here, this one takes a 40 taper tool. So my, my regular head is a 50 taper. This universal head uses a 40 taper. I've got a couple of 40 taper tools. I need to make a um, draw bar to tighten those in there with. I don't have one right now. It didn't come with one. Uh, so I need to do that before I can use it. Uh, I think too, what I want to do is, is get it. I may even take this thing apart and get it cleaned out real good. It's got these uh, Zerks in here. And I believe that these Zerks are made for oil, not grease, but a lot of people will put grease in these heads and that's not a good thing. So uh, I may see if I can take it apart, clean it out, get it properly lubricated and uh, come back and, and see if we can actually use it on a job and do some milling with it. I think it'll be a pretty, pretty fun little thing to do. So with that today, I think that is gonna be a wrap. Main thing I wanna do is just confirm that yes, indeed, that uh, it would work. I do have the right gear now. Super excited about that. This is gonna give me a lot more options with this uh, machine. Uh, I need to try to track down a, a uh, parking attachment for it or the, the crane that mounts on here to swing this over and on and off without having to uh, uh, have an overhead crane to do it every time. It's a lot easier if you use the, the parking attachment. So um, anyway, we'll be back, but uh, excited to have my drive gear finally. I will comment guys that there is a, a gentleman, actually I, uh, I've been 
keeping up with him. We've been kind of sharing emails back and forth. Uh, he goes over on uh, Instagram by Manual Machinist or the Manual Machinist, and he's actually been making some of these drive gears for K and T mill machines. He has a lead attachment on the mill machine. He actually offered to make this one for me. Um, for a price, it was a reasonable price, a very reasonable price, I thought, but I, I told him that I really wanted to make my own. Of course, now that I've found one, <laughs> I won't be doing that, but uh, I know some of you guys are looking for drive gears. You might get in touch with him or look him up on Instagram, or if you'll send me uh, an email, I will connect you with this gentleman. I think he's got them up on eBay as well, trying to sell some of them, but if you're needing a particular drive gear for your uh, mill and can't find one, he will make one. Um, I'm not going to say they're cheap, but at the same time, they're not overly expensive either. Uh, I think he's got them priced pretty fairly for the amount of work that goes into making them. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for one, check him out, Manual Machinist over on Instagram, and or you can look on eBay and uh, he's got brand new ones for sale on there. So with that, guys, I think that's going to be a wrap on this episode. As always, thanks for watching. Please do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thumbs up, comments, appreciate it as always. And with that, guys, we'll sign off. Again, thanks for watching.